What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous. It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. I like to party with the people the people need to be entertained are you not entertained let me entertain you (laughs) make your next thing a big one hey it's speaking of entertainers today on the program i have anthony train caruso or just train just train (laughs) Uh, so what you don't know who that is (laughs) You're going to get to know him in the next few minutes, so stick around for that. This week's shows, hey, as we break out of the coronavirus COVID-19 quarantine, I have one faithful little show. Besides my weddings, I do a lot of weddings on Saturdays and even Sundays, and I guess last Friday, so Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I, I've been doing a lot of weddings, but uh, mostly Saturdays, but Friday nights, usually I'm at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. The Rab, put it on the walking tour. If you ever get in the Conway, Arkansas area, it's the place to be. Full bar, kitchens open, pool tables. They got a pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you want to try to make some money while you're waiting to sing a song, did I say sing a song? Yeah, it's a video dance party karaoke jam at your favorite place to be in the whole wide world, or at least in the Conway, Arkansas area, the Rab. Come on out. Come on out and play with us. All right, let's get into it with Anthony Train Caruso. Now, I got him on Skype. It was a little spotty at first, okay? So the Skype part, it's probably the first, I don't know, maybe the first two, three, four, five minutes is uh, a little spotty. But then I got him on the phone, but the video version is still out there. So I left him on video. So if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version as well, uh, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash keys dan. But yeah, let's get into it with Anthony Train Caruso, Skyping Anthony Train Caruso now. Connection's still terrible. I don't know if you're uh, you're up on a mountain or something, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm in town. Where are you located at? I actually live in Florida. I live down by the by the bay. Down by the Gulf of Mexico, so I'm I'm low. I'm at, I'm at sea level. Okay, I got you down. I got you down, man. I'm from Miami myself, so uh, I I've chewed some of that dirt. Uh, I appreciate yeah. you, man. Hey, let's see what we can do. All right, Anthony Train Caruso. I want to know about you. My people want to know about you. Tell the people who you are. Okay, well, my name's Anthony Caruso. All my friends call me Train. I'm the lead singer songwriter and driving force behind the u.s rock band 308 ghost train in the last nine months we have amassed over 50 million plays on soundcloud and spotify alone um i wrote a little song called bleed over me that was recorded before covid ever hit and it 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 kind of transcended or translated into lean on me People took it to be like a a unity song and 12 million people came to listen to it. And then after that, they came back around to listen to everything else. And it's been a magical ride ever since. So um, the three week ghost train is a five piece band. We're based out of Palmetto, Florida, uh, which, uh, you know, we have uh, Chip Martin on guitar. Two of our guys live in Nashville, Chip Martin and Will Houchins. Uh, He plays keys, organ, and he does the strings. Uh, Dave Taylor's my bass player and Nate Kintner is the drummer and then me. So we have three of us live in Florida and two of us live in Nashville. So we're kind of a little bit separated. So it's kind of hard to like play local gigs and being a national band, you know, we, we kind of been stymied by no tour. We were supposed to be on tour like, like three times already. And, and it's just been, it's just been so crazy. This COVID craziness so we we've kind of we kind of entered we kind of entered the realm kind of bass backwards as they say we we became like an internet sensation before we could go out and play in front of people and now we're getting want to go out and play in front of people because people want to now meet us 
and we can't go and play in front of people. So it's really getting to be crazy. Like, like we could be playing on every stage all over the world and we can't. <laughs> we So it's been frustrating to say the least, my friend. I'll tell you that. Well, I'm but the missing, 308 goes. Yeah, huh? yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Train, man, I'm from Florida, so I know that we were the uh, the butt of the joke. We were always, uh, oh, is something crazy happened? Oh, it was Florida? Of course it was Florida. And from what I understand, everything, anything goes. Right now as we're talking, it's spring break. I heard the beaches are wide open. People are getting crazy. No masks, uh, just uh, drinking, just like it was like it was normal times, man. That's kind of like how I want it to be, and I'm, I'm glad that it's heading that way. But I think we still got to take some precautions. I, I I got some scientists in in one ear telling me, "Hey man, I know you. Even though you get you're getting shots or there's treatments, you still got to wear these masks and and watch out for yourselves, man." But the people want to get out and play. Mister Ghost well, wants I, to get out and play. I'll tell you what's really frustrating. This is really even more frustrating. Is down here in Florida, you know, the cover bands are playing all over the place, and 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 people are are flocking into the the bars and the stuff to watch the bands, but the original venues are shut down. You know, like all of a sudden, like it's okay, like the, for the cover bands to play, but, but the original bands can't do their thing. And, and, and I'll tell you, it's, it's getting to be a little man. I mean, it's getting to be frustrating over COVID and go on what we call media tours. You know about those. You know, I go and watch on airs to, at small and media market stations and drive around, shake hands and kiss babies. But it was OK to do that. But it wasn't OK to play a show at the venue in, in the same town. And I would go to these towns and I never met anybody with COVID and I never got it. And I'm like, I go to these towns in South Dakota and Nebraska and Missouri and nobody's wearing masks. Everybody's out eating dinner. And I'm like, why can't we play? Let us play. Please let us play. <laughs> Now, Mr. Mr. Train, when you when you listen to the playback, you're going to hear that you're you cut you broke up a little bit. But I think the people got the gist of what you're trying to say, man. You're frustrated. You've been sitting in your in your room trying to find different ways uh, to be creative, uh, stuck in your house uh, with your own thoughts, your own feelings. And, and a creator such as yourself wants to put those feelings out to the world, wants to make, uh, you know, make beautiful music. The, and get those thoughts yep. and, and, and make uh, make people, make other people around you feel how you're feeling. You know, the, are you writing these songs for, for Ghost, uh, for 308 well, Ghost Train? Yeah, yeah. I'm a chief songwriter. I'm the main songwriter of the songs. Uh, on the new EP, uh, Just Like Money was written by all of us. Uh, Something's Going On was written by me. Never Getting Over You was written by me. Uh, Love You More was written by me. And uh, Bleed Over Me was written by me and Nate Kintner, the drummer. So, I mean, there's like a little hodgepodge in there, but mainly I, I write most of the songs. Um, the thing about it is, is, the crazy thing about this is that, you, that I want to tell the people is, is that, you know, you know, we have actually touched a lot of people with the songs already, you know, and, and, and while we were gaining ground in the digital platform arena we signed i just signed a uh, an exclusive deal with the y networks a new tv network out of new york and we're going to be exclusively showing our videos through that network and we just got our own reality tv show called on the rise Excellent. so we've been doing some crazy stuff and the thing is is it's we know that people are connecting with the music Every, we want to feel the connection. It, 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 being on the stage is where you're just getting that energy bouncing off of each other, you know? And we don't get to do that while they're listening to the records. They get to get the energy from us. I get to imagine what the energy is when I see 50 million plays. But it's just not the same thing as when you're up on stage, you know, doing your thing. Hey, uh, you know, Train, uh, are, are you connected on your phone? 
No, I'm connected on on my computer. I am going to call you on the phone. We're going to have the audio through the phone, but leave your video on so we'll have the video going as well, and we'll see if we can clean up this audio a little bit. Man, because you're you're sounding good. You got the good words coming. This is me calling you. Go ahead and answer that phone. Turn down your Skype. I got you. There we go. Okay. Now, did you did you get that whole story I told you just a minute ago? Go ahead and reiterate it, man. I that, I'd be happy to hear it again. Yeah. Let, let me just t- let me try to give you the let me try to give you the short version. Okay. So here's the you know while all this is going on and we're blowing up, you know, we 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 can't do anything but continue this journey like with music. Like we wanna we wanna be able to. Let me let me turn my volume down on the computer. Go okay, ahead. so mm-hmm. so what what we want to be able to do is, you know, right now we've been such a, you know, we did it kind of bass backwards, as they say. You know, we got to be a big internet sensation, and then all of a sudden they shut everything down, and we haven't been able to go out there and connect with the fans. But we've been connecting with the music, and while we were doing that, we're making videos. We signed a, like I told you, we signed a deal with the new Y Networks, which is a. Uh, a digital television network out of New York, and they're going to be exclusively showing 308 Ghost Train videos. And we just got our own reality TV show called On the Rise. And yeah, it's about the rise of the 308 Ghost Train and other bands just like us. Actually, we created the pilot, and the network took the pilot and said, Hey, let's do this for a lot of people. I said, Great, man, we can partner together and do that. So we've been finding ways to stay out there and to get ourselves you know, poised for when this thing does open back up, we're going to be ready to go because look, man, there's a lot of bands that are a lot, you know, more popular than we are that have been sitting around holding themselves in their hands for the past year or so. And they're itching to go make some money. So the first wave of tours is going to be tough to get on because the demand is going to be so Christ. Everybody's going to want to play everybody's going to want to have everybody and, and you know so let's hope the second wave we get in on and we we keep you know kind of building our brand building the brand awareness but my thing is is we got to keep out in front of the people you know we know what it's like for them to hear us and, and we can feel maybe how they may feel because you know when we see 50 million plays we say oh somebody's getting it right somebody's getting it mm-hmm. but there's nothing like that standing on stage looking down and they're there to see you and feeling the energy bounce off each other. And that's what it's all about for us. And that's what we can't wait for. We want to get, we want to get on stage. I, I mean, we don't, we don't really care about the money. I mean, it's not about that. I mean, we, of course we're going to be well, we'll do well, but it's, it's about though the, you know, that, that energy, man, that it, it's every music man's dream to play in front of thousands and thousands of people that are there to see them. And we've set ourselves up, Dan, to do that because for, by the love of God, we've got 50 million people have listened to us or 50 million times, you know? So we've, we've, for, we've been blessed. Now all we need is the world to like get back to normal so we can go travel around and meet all, you know, meet you, you and a hundred other DJs that we've, talk to in the last six seven months that i can't wait to go through the towns and shake your hands and give you a hug you know what i mean it's just it's ridiculous that we're having to do this you know just ridiculous but ready, i mean that's, yeah that's, that's where we're at with it and we're just kind of keeping on keeping on keep our face out in the public keep the songs pushing and you know right for the best you know Man, I'm glad you reiterated your story, Train, because I missed uh, quite a bit of that, man. It was just, you you got a TV show going. You got content flowing. Your your creative juices have been cooking over this last year of lockdown. Because I I know Florida has had some some problems. I guess we, we all tried our hand, and I know... For me, uh, March and February, March, and maybe even April was dry. Nothing was happening. Not even that little, you know, uh, club that would open up with uh, with little distancing where you can do your, your little show in the corner. It was just dry for months. And people were eating through their savings, but people were going crazy because they couldn't get out. The, the you have this desire as a musician, as an entertainer, to to get 
what you're feeling inside out to the world, man. And this is something that you were able to do towards the end of lockdown. When did you start making the videos and when did you start getting that concept that you wanted to get a TV show or, or music videos out to the world? We, to tell you the truth, we, we had started on the TV show idea that filming all the way from, you know, back in June of 2019, we were, we, you know, uh, Amanda, who's, our, you know, she's the vice president of media operations for our, uh, the independent label. I own the independent label, 308 Records, which owns the 308 Ghost Ring. So she, she's been following me around for, uh, you know, a year and a half. Of course, she's the love of my life, so I mean, she's there anyway. But she's been, she's been capturing everything, everything, every place, every show. So then when COVID <laughs> I love technology. Yeah. I love technology and I hate editing. So all this is going to be in there. <laughs> We're going to get the raw deal. The, the, how the cookie dough is made. People love, <laughs> People love raw. Anyways, we, so let me pick up where we're going. So you didn't cut too much or whatever. So, so we started doing that. I recorded just released the born in the wild. EP, which is the first. EP. And you can find everything on Spotify. iTunes. We're all over we're everywhere. You can find SoundCloud. It's a good place to go over there. Uh, you can hear just about everything on SoundCloud for two songs because the singles haven't been released yet, but they are on Spotify and I. So if you go check out the music, man, you, know, you can kind of see the journey of the songwriting team even started to kind of take on a new new faces. And and so at the same time, we were shooting videos. You know, we just kept shooting videos. We just kept... And, and all of a sudden, you know, I felt, you know, I guess I could say this to you. I fell in love with Amanda back in, I guess, August of last year, the 2019. And, and, it's, and, and things started happening, and I started writing songs again. And another batch of songs. And now these ones were all, you know, I guess, related to this crazy new thing I found called love. And then I wrote, you know, Bleed Over Me. And, and this is a funny thing about music is that, Dan, I wrote these songs like Amanda surgery and, and I was and I hadn't seen her for a couple of days and I didn't know what was going on and 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 because yeah at that time we weren't really hooked up and and she uh and and she sitting and she calls me like two days later and I said oh listen don't say nothing I said listen I, I, I miss you and I really want to kiss you and she paused and she says uh okay but I'm afraid I'm gonna bleed on you and I said oh you just gave me my next song I said oh my god I said I gotta go <laughs> I said I gotta go and look, I've been waiting to talk to her for two days. I hung up the phone and I ran to the piano in about 15 minutes. I wrote Bleed Over Me. And it just started a spark. It started a fire. It started this. And then came just like money. And then came something's going on. And then came never getting over you. And then more happened in a hotel room in the middle of the night while I was sleeping. And we were getting ready to go to the studio. And I wrote in my sleep, love you more. And, and it's like, oh, my God, this is crazy. It's crazy. So this whole video, we're doing this, and this executive, this network executive, Bill Poor and Shelley, who, by the way, used to be Paul McCartney's manager for his publishing company for 20 years. This guy's like, the, he's like the greatest. You know, him and Tim Sabian, he's another guy that's in my corner. He's the guy who launched Howard Stern, uh, at Sirius XM. Yeah, Tim, Tim's my advisor, and Bill's the, he's been in my corner working with me, but Bill's the one assigned to the, the Y Network. He calls me up and he says, train. He says, I love your content, man. I said, thank you. Like, I'm like, he shocked me. Cause this guy has been like dealing with Billy Joel, Paul McCartney, you don't name it. I mean, the greatest, you know what I'm saying? And he's telling me he loves my stuff. And I don't, I'm like trying to see if this is a joke call or something. Like, is he, you know, is he, is this guy like just, you know, punking me around or something? Nah, he was. I finally found that guy, like we all need that guy that's in the industry that says, hey, I love what you're doing. That guy is, those two guys are Tim Sabian and Bill Porcelli. And I have to tell you, man, they they have really, really took to, to what I'm doing. And um, man, I mean, there it went into, I, I said, hey, Bill, listen, I, I call, he calls me one Saturday morning, I guess about two months ago. And he says, he says, what you doing, man? I said, well, it's Saturday morning. He said, he says, well, you said you're working too, huh? I said, yeah. I said, listen, man, I, 
I said, I'll sleep when I die. I said, hey, I ain't got no time to sleep. This is a, this journey, you can't rest. So I went, I said, listen, I know this, where you're calling me about the video. And I said, but I just want to run something by you. Mm-hmm. And I told him a little story about, you know, you know, about the whole real quick about, you know, being on the rise and it's organic and raw, kind of a fly on the wall type of thing behind the scenes, you know, Sean, and we put the pilot together and they absolutely loved it. So in this summer, this summer, we're going to be, uh, you know, starting to show the pilot in, I think, 13 episodes this year, you know, for the season. Yeah, man. So, so it sounds like. He... Play, so when you're not able to play out. Yeah. You better find another way to stay up in the mix. And that's what I've been doing. I got another great thing I just started to do, too, I want to share with you. Hit me. Have you ever have you ever heard of NFTs, non-fungible tokens? I just heard about it over the last two okay. weeks, man, and I'm learning right. well, about how to well, take the- your content and make it into a digital form. But tell me about what you're learning about it. Well, well you're talking to the first record label in the United States that has a non-fungible token store. So, and we're the second, we're the second rock band that's putting out their album on uh, OpenSea NFTs. Uh, Kings of Leon did it last week. They did it for a few weeks, and they did really well. I think they sold eighty six hundred forty six uh, packages, which come with vinyl and the whole album exclusively with artwork. I think they got like sixty three bucks per. They made about four hundred thousand dollars in like two weeks. Wow! Yeah, yeah, people. People are paying millions of dollars for one, uh, you know, one of one orcas, you know, one of one, like it's a one of one or it's a, a one of uh, limited edition or, and they'll pay the extra values because they're the only ones. It's actually, like, imagine a vending machine for artwork and music. Yeah. And, you know, like y- y- it's a one of a kind vending machine. Like it's a, almost building your own Louvre or your own Sony records collection, your own whatever. And, and the artwork and the music that you're getting, no one can buy anywhere else on the planet. Well, then that kind of increases the value of it. So I got into the non-fungible token market last week, and I I, I took the time to set it up and and to learn it. And, you know, hey, what we do now during this this COVID, this this downtime, is going to be what makes us who we are later on when it all breaks open. If you've been sitting around doing nothing, waiting for the world to pick you back up, man, you're going to be in a jam. If you've been diligently doing your work to try to make your world go round, okay? Your world will spin when the time comes because you've got to you've got to keep yourself in in different in all these. You got to stay ahead of the curve sometimes. So I always pride myself with the fact that I try to really figure out how do I okay. So I can't go play out live. I can't do. It. But what can I do? Can I get on a TV show with? Dan? I mean, can I get on an interview with Dan? Can I can I go? Can I go to the line networks and throw another video? Can we go write another song and just go record it? Uh, you know, uh, it, it, anything, anything to keep putting stuff in front of people, I think will be accumulation, the sum of the total. It'll all work its way, kind of like a volcano, right? It's all doing this, and one that's going to let the top up is going to blow. And that's what I think is going to happen because, I mean, we're, we're doing we're doing what we're supposed to do. I mean, we're we're really doing what we're supposed to do. Am I talking too loud, Amanda Bay? <laughs> oh, I talk too much. Amanda says I talk too much. I'm sorry, brother. Uh uh-uh. uh, I'm <laughs> enjoying every bit of this, man. I'm getting knowledge. You're dropping knowledge, Mister Train, and it that's what this podcast is all about: is gaining knowledge from different people. And right now, I'm gaining knowledge from you, Anthony Train Caruso, and the the NFTs, man. It's just the next logical step. I heard about Bitcoin, you know, year you know years ago. And it's just the next logical step of, of t- well, it's something that's been in the process, uh, and, and I know this is controversial, is one world, having the whole yeah. world together, decentrified, getting governments out of it, you know, getting them out of your face and off your back and just making your me, own thing. Let me tell you what's really driving me. Yep. I want to share this big advocate and I've been the true underdog all my life. So, um, you know, the little guy, I'm going to fight for the little guy. And as I get bigger, I'm going to fight for the little guy. But 
these platforms, man, should be ashamed of themselves. It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful what Spotify is doing to us, SoundCloud is doing to us on the page, you know, with the number of, of, of streams, you know, people are trying to make money, especially when the world is hurting right now. These guys are, are, are just, they're just ignoring you. They're, they're coming up with, they're coming up with, uh, uh, there's no way you did that many. Well, yes, it is. It's showing on your website and people are, people are listening. And then you look at the people and I can name 200 of my own personally. You know what I'm saying? So where's my money at, right? But guess what? With the NFT. With the NFTs, no more freeloaders, brother. No more freeloaders. Protects the artist IP because somebody has to buy it to listen to it. And I think that this may, I'm not going to say it's going to solve the problem because it's not, yeah. but it may open up doors to think how we could blockchain songs. So that when they're put on a platform, you play them. You can't share them with nobody. You can't. It, it's like a, it, it, there's a lock of some. That's what this NFT does. It's a blockchain. Okay. So this, this the Ethereum blockchain protects the, the, the digital assets. It's fascinating. Oh, I'm yeah. saying, why can't, we, why can't we apply that to IP across the board? And when a song goes out there and it's played on the radio, it automatically, it automatically throws back a signal to some kind of central collection area. It's not run by any of these big three record labels. It, it's actually independently, you know, monitored, you know, uh, by a third party, like like they would for the for the like Deloitte and Touche when they do the the Academy Awards. An independent firm that you know looks through that and it. And if a beep comes through, you get paid the nine cents, the statutory federal rate that has been uh, put into law by Congress. Not point zero zero one because that's what they feel like paying you. You know what I'm saying? I Absolutely. want my nine cents, brother, and I want everybody else to get their nine cents. Absolutely, man. You know I'm listening to, uh, who is it, Ted Nugent? or No, it must have been, I don't know, one of them was, was saying they got $50 million and they and they ended up with like a, a $1,200 check after millions and millions and millions of views. And you're like, you know, hey, you, you said in the beginning of this podcast you don't do it for the money, but the money makes the world go round. The money puts the roof over your head, and the oh. money affords you the ability to get equipment and guitars and pianos yeah. and the ability me, to, to let, put this sweet music me, out there. Let me walk that back a minute because I don't want to give anybody the wrong idea. <laughs> okay, yes, we we are in this to, to reap what we sow. Mm. Okay, yes, we want our money. Yeah. We are not, we are in it for being paid for the level of talent that we give to the world and the quality product that we give to you, the people, and that if you consume that product and that product you like, then we deserve to be paid for it. Yes, we want our money because that's what we do. It's our business. It's just like, hey, you own a McDonald's. Are you giving away the hamburgers? No. No, you want to be paid for every hamburger, right? I want to be paid for every play. So, you know, SoundCloud, well, I'll tell you, they owe me so much money right now. It's not, and I'm having a fight. So here it is. They're making me fight for it. Uh, the guy you're talking about who came out publicly not too long ago was Jimmy Page. That's it. He came out publicly. Yeah, and he really sandblasted SoundCloud and Spotify. And he he kind of he kind of said, yo, you guys are setting yourselves up. And then I turn around, I call my lawyer. And you know what he says to me? Oh, there's 10 lawsuits right now. Uh, 10 big lawsuits against SoundCloud. And another, and another I don't know, man, the five or 10 against Spotify? Huge ones. They, they, Spotify actually hired TuneCore. You know TuneCore, the distributor? I do you know, not. TuneCore, I, well, TuneCore is one of these dis distribution networks that, you know, collects your money for you and everything when, you, you know, when you're an independent label. And, you know, I, I was with them for a while, and I thought they were like a really solid company. You know, I found that they have a department designed with people in it to say no like a, a no department, like a department of staff designed to find out how not to pay you, not how to pay you. Yeah. Yeah. You would, and these guys, and it's filled, it's filled with like young musicians and, and, and you would think, wow, man, where's the loyalty to, to the indie guy. And, and, and I got out of tune court. I, I, I took everything. When I found that out and I had good sources, I got a lot of people I know in this business and I, 
a lot of people in the right places. <laughs> and when I heard that, I pulled everything off the market. And I went with DistroKid, which is an AI based and, and a very fair, it's an artificial intelligence based uh, platform where, you know, there's no hocus pocus. It, it is what it is. If it's a play, it gets paid, right? You know, so I just recently did that back in December and put everything back up. And, you know, I'll tell you, it's just, it, it's crazy that we have to chase after our own money. But yeah. I remember, I remember my dad, he was a contractor, a roofer all our lives. I remember when I got over it, you know, I'd say, what are you doing that briefcase? <laughs> he never would tell me. One day when I was, you know, you know, a man, uh, he, he came by one day and they, I said, you know, you never told me it was in that briefcase. He said, a 38. I said, anything else? He said, no, just a 38. Cause I, every Friday I had to go collect my damn money and I was getting my money cause I paid my people already, you know? So like every businessman has this same, you know, the same tales of woe, I guess you want to call it, but it's just not right, man. It's not right. And it's not right the way they pay the stream. Like, I'm having a, I'm having a, uh, I'm getting ready to initiate a lawsuit against SoundCloud, Spotify, and all of them because they're trying to tell me that a kid in Thailand or South Africa, he, now it's the same quality music delivered all over the world, but the young kid in Johannesburg, South Africa, listening to my song is not worth as much as a young kid in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, if you tell me that, yep, yep. How about this? If it's a country like Malaysia or Thailand and they're listening to our stuff, it's not worth anything at all. There's only 10, 15 countries they say are worth any value that they have any deals with. And that's BS because they're still collecting the advertising dollars, billions of dollars from all over the world. And there's, and there's no fair and equitable distribution. So this is a man, this is a real, this is getting to be a real problem. Dan. I, I mean, uh, even the discrimination, it's almost like a discrimination that some kid listening to the same song in one part of the world is not as valuable as some kids listening to it in Toronto, Canada. Yeah, that's a bunch of bull because they're still going to show that, that that advertiser, that hit, and they're going to go, they're going to count that as one of the hits, and they'll say, oh, yeah, we got 50 million hits. Doesn't matter where they're from. This way the advertisers will come to them, or they'll try to draw them in. Man, yep. that sounds like a bunch of bunk, man. But I'm glad yeah, that you're getting into the B, the the uh, N, NFTs uh, because that sounds like the next step in getting yeah. your money. And DistroKid, I know I put a lot of the links for all the, the musicians and, and artists that I talk to. DistroKid seems like that's the next step as well, or at least it's a – it's a it's a small step in the right direction. At least you're getting some kind of of uh, pay. But man, yeah, I think I think the I think the distro kid for what it's worth mm. is the best place for the indie person that wants to get a, even if it's a small place, wants to get paid uh, without much hassle. Um, you're going to get paid through distro kid the way it's set up. It's probably one of the best platforms out there. And I researched like 25 of them. So. I mean, I do, I do that. So I, I would really recommend it, you know, as a good start. Now, listen, you know, something else may come along later. It gets better. I don't know. You know, you got to keep your eyes open. But I like this for kid because it helps build a community also within it. What I mean by that is you can interact with the other artists that are on in the distri distribution chain. Mm. And you all can share each other's music with each other and build community boards and, and back slaps, what they call back slaps. And DistroKid has its own um, spin the wheel to get on the DistroKid uh, Spotify playlist, which is pretty got a lot of people on it. And, you know, so it, it, it creates a sense of community, too, for the independent artist. You know, and it, you buy one guy's album, they buy yours. You know, it, it's a, you know, it's a, you know, which is what you got to do in this business. You got to shake hands and kiss babies everywhere you go. You know? Well, that's the way it used to be when you were starting to build your, your website. You wanted to get links from other people. It used to be link farms. You would dedicate pages uh, to different links so you could try to get up on Google. You know, and I know I still got 11,000 friends on MySpace. I'm not giving it up. You know, you, you don't throw away anything. But, uh, you know, those people, hey, it may come back. It may never come back. But you're heading down to DistroKid, and then you're going through the uh, the NFTs. NFTs, man, I, I, I was listening to a podcast 
podcast where some musicians out of Hot Springs, it's a husband and wife, Cliff and Susan. If you get a chance, uh, listen to the Cliff and Susan podcast. Uh, I, I, my voice has been on there as well. But uh, they were talking about getting their NFTs, and, and you have to have uh, – there's different uh, services that can help you. Some are free. And some are a nominal fee, you know, in the in the fifty dollar to one hundred to two hundred dollar range. I'm kind of interested. How did you get into that NFT? If you okay. want to go briefly, okay. So, okay. so the so the, the best the best way to go, and I'm going to tell everybody how to do this. It's easy. The best way to go is OpenSea. That's O P E N S E A. It's the largest Ethereum free marketplace on NFTs in the world. And what you do is you buy some Ethereum for like, I don't know, you buy about $100 worth. Okay, You put it in your wallet. You're, first, you're going to have to get an account. Then you're going to have to get a wallet. You're going to want to get a MetaMask wallet if you do the Ethereum. And you, you, you buy about $100 worth. And then on your first transaction and your first transaction alone, you have to pay the gas. And that's what they call it, paying the gas. The gas runs about 70 bucks. Okay, to, to, to put your first thing up into the... So we put up the first, we, we're, we're going to go chronologically here. And I'll tell you what we're about to release so you'll know. Then I can tell the fans so they'll know too because it's going to be pretty cool. But we put the Born in the Wild EP cover up for a one-of-one one Orca for four Ethereums, which is about $7,500. But if you buy it, it's yours. I mean, it's the first ever released artwork, and there's only one available. You see what I'm saying? So... It, it, that's how you do it. So then you what you, you pay the gas for and then you post that. Now, after that, all you have to do every time you post something is sign. Because once you click the sign button, it's free to post. And the buyer pays the gas after that. So you kind of buy in at like 70 bucks, I think I bought in that. And now I can post collections. It's called the 308 Ghost Train Music and Art Collection. And what's going to come out on it, and this is where it makes it special. One thing that there is not anything of on the planet is a complete album by the 308 Ghost Train. We have singles. We have three singles that aren't part of EPs. We have two EPs, 14 songs total, okay? There's going to be an album called A Train of Thought, okay? It's going to have all 14 songs on it. It's going to have a unique artwork, only, you know, a limited edition, only the people that buy the digital asset will be able to own that artwork. It'll never be sold anywhere else on the planet. There'll be a vinyl album that comes with the package, okay? And it's going to run about $50, $60. And we're going to try to sell it through there, but you'll get a vinyl. And what I was thinking about adding, if I could make it work, if I could make it work, I'm thinking about offering a limited amount of um, uh, live stream concert and meet and greet so and that would boost the price up more because of course we all got to get together and we all got to play and we got to go in your living room through the through the, the digital you know through the this like here and uh, basically it'd be like how you know the house concerts they used to have all oh, they still were very popular but it's the house car concert uh via you know zoom or whatever whatever platform we would use skype zoom whatever so um, that may be a little complicated. That's why I'm not committing completely mm. to that yet. But but if it would be, the price would probably be about $100 for, for everything. Um, you know, people, I, there's a guy that just sold some art on there for $66 million, digital art. Yeah. Just yeah, I mean, there's a, a guy piece of that, that, man. There's a guy, make, there's a guy making $700,000 a month. He's some kind of crazy art. They call him Beepo Crap. You need to go check this guy out. It's craziness. This is what got me all excited. Yeah. It got me all excited because it's like the sky's the limit and it's protected. No, nobody can take it. Nobody's going to take it and give it away when they spend money on it. They're going to take it and hold on to it, like kind of like your old coin collection or your stamp collection. You're going to hide that in your vault. Well, now it's called a crypto vault. It's not a regular vault. It's a crypto vault. You hide everything in your wallet and in your vault, and nobody can get to it. It's protected by crazy crazy codes that man are it, it's just it's incredible it's I, incredible yeah. it's like it's like spy shit dude yeah you're it's only like scratching the surface train you're i mean and i've heard of the open sea and i've heard of the wallet and i've heard of the gas all these things uh, you know you're just uh confirming things that i've listened to 
and, and these are things that need I need to check in on more. Man, you're Absolutely. And from what I understand, even after you sell an item, an NFT, a non fungible uh, token, uh, you still get a piece of it after that. Yeah. Every time it gets it gets used or sold, right? Ten percent. Ten percent of the value. Yeah, it's like royalties forever. It's mailbox money, brother. Like the kids and say, stacks this? on stacks on stacks. How about this? Please. Okay, so so I learned how to do this, right, and master this craft, just like you do when you're a DJ or a songwriter, you master your craft, right? Then all of a sudden, you're in a position to help others. Well, now the 308 Music Collection, 308 Records starts its own, another collect, collection, and it signs up other artists and other painters and other this and that. And then it pays the artist their commission and just takes the 10%. You see what I'm saying? So, so like, I, I got a whole store. So imagine I build, like, a whole, like, Metropolitan Museum of Art and Music. You, you come in, you pay the admission fee, and if you buy the painting, the artist gets the money for the painting. I hope they get a million dollars because I'm getting 10%. You see what I'm saying? So it's I, can you see where this could grow into some really crazy enterprise, like a, like a large-scale digital Walmart or not a Walmart, a large-scale digital Bloomingdale's. Man, train your excitement makes me excited, and in turn, it's going to make other people excited. You know, the 308 uh, tr Ghost Train, does that, are you recording all of your own stuff? Or, you know, just yeah. to, just oh, to well, get, or is okay. that all you, or do you have yeah, other places that you record? It's, it's all me but one song, okay? It's all me but one song, and one song came about in a crazy way, you know. I think I probably should back up a minute and tell you, tell you something about 308 ghost Please. trains you know 308 comes from john 308 the wind blows where it pleases no one knows where it comes or goes but it's in everyone born of the spirit so um i write a lot of the songs in my sleep or i get a lot of the starts what we call songs starts, the melody lines or this or that in my sleep so i believe the ghost who i call the whole ghost you know ghost is my musical director and everybody calls me train so henceforth the 308 ghost train so that's how the name kind of came about now um your question was again, one more time. No, you just, uh, do you, are you recording all your stuff independently? Uh, do you yeah, own yeah, was, everything yeah. all, or do you have to answer to a yeah, label? This, no, everything is independent. I own the label. I own the masters. I own the publishing. I own the logos. I own the merchandise. I own it all. The band works. It works for me. Every one of them is, you know, paid, paid, you know, to do what they do. Chip Martin and I co-produce together. So he makes his money on, on the recording and stuff, but we do it, you know, in his studio, me and him have been working together for a few years now. It's all independently done. There is no major money put behind anything. There is one song we did do though. It's um, a cover song. And I'm going to tell you this, the, the crazy story, of this real quick mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, back in, uh, I guess back in September or October, I took a trip to Nebraska with Amanda to see her mom. And her mom sent me back with these 45s, these bunch of old 45s. And, my birthday came in November and, and, and Amanda bought me, buys me one gift a week until my birthday on the 29th. Well, the second week she bought me an old, she was coming and she says, I'm going to the store. We were having a little debate about something and we were disagreeing on a, on a, on a point. She says, well, I'm going to the store. I said, good. I'm sitting right here. And she says, here's your birthday present. And it was a record player, the old record player. So I go grab a stack of those 45. And I'm sitting here and I'm saying, go ahead, you go to the store, right? And I put the 45. She goes to the store. I get about 25 deep and I come across this song called Eve of Destruction. Now, this is while the presidential election was going on and the craziness and, and the stuff was blowing up. And, and the song was from 1965, Barry Maguire. And it was the beginning of the Vietnam War. And, and it was a crazy song because it got, it, it got shifted somehow, put in the hands of a radio station, went to number one. Well, I heard it and I said, oh man, if I update these lyrics, I said, this is today. Well, I get so excited. I call her up. I said, you got to come home right now. You got to come home right now. I called Chip. I said, dude, we got to go to that. I got to come in. Something's, I got to come in and do this song. I said, it's the time and we got to do it now. And then about, I guess, I don't know, three, four days later, I decided to call Barry McGuire. I write him. And he did, and he agrees to talk to me on the phone. And I have a phone conversation in which Amanda films the whole thing. 
Now, this is Barry Maguire, dude, the number one artist from the number one hit, Even Destruction. And we're having this hour and a half conversation, dude. It's like just spirit filled. I mean, gold. I go to Nashville and I cut that song. I got to tell you something. The ghost was running through my veins, man. So if you listen to that one, you know, well, you can listen to them. Play any ones that you want to do because mm-hmm. they're all, you know, you can play them all. But Eva Destruction, so Barry Maguire writes me back after he hears it. He says, you can quote me on this. You don't have to go for the gold train because you already are. Yeah. You know what you no? did for Barry? You made him feel like it was back in the early 60s when he was thinking about that song, when he was recording that song, when the things were, that were happening, Vietnam Wars happening all around him. You made him go back in time and relive this passion that and when that song made it to uh, you know on the charts on the radio yeah. that that's what he you did, did for him and in turn yeah, no, he, you what you, he did for me yeah what he did for me was fire me up man he fired me completely up i mean he's 86 years old and i even got him singing a song dan i got him singing a song he says no one's ever heard that he wrote we got a piece we got a piece of the verse and the chorus of it you know just you know, he's like 86 living in Baker, somewhere in out in California somewhere. Uh, I don't know, but great freaking guy, dude. Unbelievable. I love him. It's almost like we became instant like brothers. Yeah. You know, yeah, we did. It was like when I, I said, I feel like I, he said to me, he said, train, I don't know why, but I feel like I've known you all my life. And I said, man, dude, I love you. He, I said, I hope I get to meet you before this is all done. He said, I don't know if we'll ever see each other, my friend, but you just carry this torch. And I said, man, I went to crying, man. My eyes got watered. It's, it's really moving, man. It man. was crazy stuff. So could that's you the imagine? only song I've ever cut. That's the only song I've ever cut that's not one I wrote. Yeah, but could you imagine 20, 30 years from now, somebody comes up to you and says, yep. hey, Train, I want to record that song that you did all those years ago. How is that going to yep. make you feel exactly how you made this man feel? How beautiful. It'll make my heart pump out of my chest. Absolutely. Do this. Oh, you know yeah. that's right. Absolutely. You know, you know, you know what? You, this is what it's all about, Dan. You hear the stories we're talking here. He, this is what, this is what, you know, people say, what do you do this for? I said, cause it's who I am. I said, I wouldn't know how to do anything else anyway. I said, but they say, well, what's most important to you? And people absolutely expect you to say the money the fame and the fortune my answer is i want to i want to leave a legacy I, I i want people to know who i am after i leave i i want my time on this earth to be recognized as productive and to have done something to help humanity and help people in any way whether it's to heal somebody's heart with a song whether it's to get them riled up through patriotism or get them riled up through political anarchy through even destruction whatever it does that makes a move and do something and get up off the couch and live instead of just you know be alive instead of just walking around living you know what i mean that's i mean that's what it's really all about absolutely you know? my man oh you you're you're fired up you you have <laughs> a, such a passion man and you have ideas th- that go in so many different directions i love it and I'm glad you have Amanda because it sounds like before August, you might have been in a little bit of a funk uh, before July last year. What, what was happening uh, that she changed it? Did, were you in a funk before that? What was going on way back then? Um, I had just released uh, 21 Guns and a Million Tears and Born in a Wild album. And and the music started to take off, but it wasn't taking off like really good. Like like when I say take off, I mean like Spotify after a couple months with like hundred thousand streams, which is good. You know, most people don't even get a hundred streams in their musical career. You know, but hundred thousand was like, and I thought that was like great, but really it wasn't. It wasn't doing anything. It wasn't resonating. You know, SoundCloud had like a hundred plays. Like SoundCloud was like doing nothing. Like I don't know what happened and. Then she came along, got me all fired up. Yeah, and, and the ideas started to flow, and then the videos, and she became the eyes to the audio artistry. She became the visual to the audio, and it became like a team. Like, and we worked together, and then oh my god, it was like so like unbelievable. And 
Then, like, I fell in love with her. And, like, all of a sudden, all these songs stuck up. My emotions stuck And everything changed. And, I mean, it from, from, from then on, it's been one hell of a, hell of a ride so far well who's i hope it doesn't end uh, well, okay she's involved in you know uh, first and foremost she's your muse she's you know helping yeah. you in that way now but it seems like that's part of the team too is she handling the the social media or is she handling the camera no, she's, or she she's the, yeah she's the videographer what? and director she's the director of all the videos and she, you know which i have to give her some props she want to uh she won a couch film festival award this year, first place for bleed over me. So she's doing really good. And, um, you know, we've been, we've been making, uh, you know, I've gotten four awards. I've gotten three awards, uh, since she's come along three or four, since she's come along, I had one before her, a posse, but I've gotten a CMA, uh, another posse, a couch film award festival. And I was nominated for six other indie awards and I don't know, man, I'm hoping the ISTA awards are coming up, that nominations are coming up. I'm hoping I get a few nods there too. So she's actually not only been the muse, but she's the, she's the visual, for the audio, like she's the eyes of the 308 Ghost Train. She brings us to life so that you can get to know who we are. So you can get personal, you know, an intimate connection with us through videos, through, uh, live streaming, through, um, the, the TV show. Um, you know, she helped me create the TV show idea. She's been, she's brilliant. I mean, she's, she's just been one. You're, you're right. She's the muse all the way around, first and foremost. Well, that's, and, I mean, and that's it. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've written some, I've written some of the greatest songs in my life. This last EP, all the songs are about Amanda. And it's one of the best EPs. I don't know if you've listened to the Something's Going On EP, but I got to take some. I encourage you to go listen to all the songs because, it's really I'm so proud of the artistry, and I, I'm kind of excited to see what's what's up next. You know what's next. So oh, I'm stoked you know, for you, man. Well, what's next is that TV show. How did that yeah. get recorded? Where did that get recorded? Uh, the whole band is scattered throughout the the, the southern United States. Uh, but how, how did you all come together? Are you all uh, the whole band involved in the in the TV show, or is this uh, a project yeah. for Train? No, no, it's, it's, it's the whole TV show with, with me and Amanda at the helm, but, um, it's all of us, but, uh, here's the deal. Uh, you know, like I told you about those media tours we did, we crisscrossed the country. Every time we shot a video, like Santa Barbara yacht and a couple of the other songs, um, we went from here to like South Dakota and back and crisscrossed through Nashville. And of course I record in Nashville. And of course, whenever I'm recording Chip and Will are there and Dave and Nate, so we're all together when we go record. So we take advantage of those times and then, they also do stuff on their own, send us clips, and then we edit them in so that we can, if we have something we want to talk about, we'll, you know, I'll, I'll call them up and say, guys, I need this from you, and then they'll send it to me. And we work like that, and me, Dave, and Nate, we live here, so we're going to get together for dinner on a Sunday, uh, and we're going to sit down, and we're just going to get some shots of, like, uh, showing people, you know, what it takes, the camaraderie it takes, you know, the gelling things you have to do, you know, bands kind of your family, you know, you, we're, we're, we're brothers, you know, that, that's what we do, you know, and, and you know, and, and just getting some B roll stuff and maybe having a little conversation and every show has three elements to it. It has the journey of the 308 ghost train, you know, where it's going, how it's starting and, and through. Then the second one is a lesson I want to teach everybody that they don't tell you the music business, that nobody knows. Like, okay, I want to, you know, you know, deep, deep bunks and myths about, you know, platforms and Spotify and thinking you're going to record a song and you're going to become a star and a millionaire with 40,000 songs uploaded a week. It just ain't happening. And what you really got to do to get your face out in front of people, you better invest in yourself. You better invest in yourself. If you don't invest in yourself, nobody else, Clive Davis is not coming through the door to grab you by the hand. It ain't happening. You know, and then the third element of the show is I'm going to take a song every week and tell you all the behind the scenes storyteller about the song. So, you know, what made the song and a little extra is what went into promoting that song or to get the song in front of people in the right way so that it could get a chance to be you know, shown in its best light. 
So that's your, you know, that's the lineup each week for it. And, and I'm thinking this summer they're saying it's going to start. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. Dan. You know? Well, train all that, all that behind the scenes stuff, all that behind the music stuff. That's the fodder that me as a DJ enjoys having in my head when I'm putting that record on the radio or I'm playing it at a club. There's a lot of times that I, you know, I, I get to pick the theme on Friday nights when I'm uh, at the Rab, which is a club here in Conway, Arkansas. But I get to pick the theme. So if my theme is is rock that night. Man, I'll throw a train. I'll throw a, a three oh eight train song and and they'll go uh who is that and i'll say well that's 308 train i had them on the podcast and and uh you know they come out of uh the, the, he's based out of the palm coast now i i is 308 records is based out of the palm coast of of florida well, it's, it's actually the, it's actually close to the sun we're, we're we're below tampa you know where st petersburg is i do know where that's at I, i've eaten yeah, that dirt plenty of times but yeah, you're, we're, you're you're we're on the gulf a, huh Yes. Yeah, we're on the Gulf Coast over here. We're 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 close to Palmetto, Palmetto and Ruskin, Bradenton, Hillsborough County, just below St. Pete. Yeah, that right? gives you that gives that's not like South Florida, which gives you no access to the rest of these United States. At least right. you're close enough, you know, to get into Georgia, to get into Alabama, to get all the way up into into Tennessee. You know, you're close well, enough that you can. Yeah. Uh, get over there in just a little bit but you said you recorded some in nashville is that where the studios are or do you have a that's studio where, your own studio we, no that's where the 308 goes train records is it Jim martin studios in nashville we we exclusively recorded every song there it's our studio it's our it's our home uh Chuck does his own thing too so too but i mean for the 308 goes train it's where we do all the records and uh, a lot of people, like a lot of people, don't believe us. Like you know, I we they go listen to the records and they think that we're on Sony or Warner Brothers or Universal, and you no, know, we're just a bunch of great songwriters and musicians, and we know how to make records. We've been making records for a long time. I mean, so like no, you just know how to do things. You do it right. You know, we're just the kind of people that do things right. Uh, I mean, I've had several reviews, more than several, maybe a hundred reviews. And people always ask me, are you sure this isn't like a, a, a an imprint label? So I say, and I say, no, it's not. Everything's owned by 308 Records right here in Palmetto, Florida. Yeah, I, ne and, I never discount that little kid, that SoundCloud DJ that's sitting in his room with his, you know, $1,000 uh -huh. worth of equipment. He's just starting out. Eventually, he might be that next guy that can sit behind a bigger, you know, piece of equipment and have that discerning ear that can develop uh, um, uh, artists into, into playable music. And, you know, you can come at him with an idea, but you it's good to have that editor. Are you that person that edits or do you have somebody that's at the control room in the booth that's putting it all well, together? Well, yeah, me and Chip Martin do all the song arrangements and structures and, and I write all the melodies and the words and, and the person, but Chip does a lot of the editing. He's, you know, he's, he's got, he's an engineer too. So, so he, he uses his skills and he's, he's a masterful musician. So all the guys in the band, see, this is the thing. We're all, we're all masters of what we do, um, you know, and and that's the first and foremost. The second thing is, is that we all dig what we're doing and we all dig each other. And that's kind of like, even though we come from different backgrounds and you'll, you'll learn this about us is that, you know, like Will's from the country and classical background and, you know, Dean, the bass player, some heavy hard rock, heavy metal background and Nate's from the, the you know, the, the pure rock and, and maybe even a little bit of jazz background. And then chips from like the classic rock era, and I'm from the classic rock and kind of mixed in like a like a breed like a like a mixed breed dog from from everything from the fifties to the two thousands, you know, kind of music. And yeah, we're just like I don't know, and it, and, and and then it comes up with the music we talk. It's just fantastic. Man. It's a, it's a, it's just a magical magical thing, man. Just well, magical. Mr. Train, I've had the privilege on this podcast to talk to a lot of musicians. Some of them are solo musicians, a guy a guy with a guitar, a girl with a, a keyboard, 
And some of them are, you know, like yourself, are in a group. And I could see the advantage that you've taken having people to bounce ideas off of. It's part of a team. It's not coming out of one head. That puts a lot of pressure on one person to come up with all the ideas. You can come in with a melody, a little idea, maybe uh, hum it a little bit. Dee do do dee do 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 And then, the, you know, your guitarist, your drummer will say, how about this? How about that? And you'll uh, together you'll bang out ideas, and eventually oh, yeah. it all becomes a three hundred eight ghost train song. Well, I, I I would I'd be so proud if if this Friday night you would play uh, just like money and something's going on at your little concert. I think people like that you can dance to them. They're pretty cool and rocky. So if you go listen to them, just like money is a uh, you can find it on Spotify. You can find it on SoundCloud. Something's going on. You have to get off of SoundCloud because it's not, I mean, off of Spotify because it's not released yet on SoundCloud. But if you need the MP3s, let me know. Write me and I'll send you the MP3s if you need them. Oh, you better believe it, man. I'll put them out on RadioWhat.com, my little internet station that I've been running for uh, quite some time. <laughs> okay, so so what do, you, what do you want, MP3s or you just want links? No, no, an MP3 will be fine. And uh, anybody okay, else okay. out there, I invite all the all the new artists and people that are trying to promote their songs. I'm happy to do it because what what it, what it does is uh, when it plays, it'll tweet, and that'll give you something oh, yeah. to retweet. Well, it's well, it's pretty just cool. Just like money, just like money hit number seven in Canada. This week. So it's a uh, it's making its move. It's so nice it's to have those accolades, man. I guess as, a, as an entertainer, that's the only way you can really gauge. You, you know, yes, you can make a big pile of money, a big bag of money for your song, but also the awards. Somebody thought uh, highly enough of, about you that they said, hey, you know what? We made this list, and you know what? You're yeah. on this list. Yeah. Isn't that well, cool? That's what I, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I tell everybody. They say, oh, what chart were you on? I said, well, uh, we were our first song that we, we, have, uh, we have four number one hits. In these little indie charts, what they call radio uh, area charts, like one was in the Midwest, you know, one's over here. And I said, listen, man, if on any given day, when a group of people you've never met in your life decides that you're number one, you take that. You hear me? You take it because <laughs> you're number one in their eyes. So number one is number one. I don't care who says it. If somebody says it other than you, then you're number one. And it's a great thing, man. Hey, we're all here on the pursuit of happiness. If somebody gives you a smile or sends a good feeling your way, take that, man. Enjoy it. Hey, you know that 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 feeling that you just got? You earned it. Enjoy it, man. And, and you, you and you've been playing. I can tell you've been playing for a long time. I'm guessing it's something that started in school. Uh, you know how, how many years you've been at this thing? Uh, way too many to talk about, man. Over twenty five. You see, so, and, and we were talking about. No, we I'm your twenty. I'm, I'm your twenty year overnight success. No, we were talking about value, and uh, you know, you say, uh, uh, oh, "Oh, yes, you've been working on this craft. You've been like a doctor goes to to uh, to school for twelve years uh, to learn how how to do his thing. You pay him the value. Well, you've been studying for twenty five years plus." And now yeah. people got to pay you for that value. And I hope that you yeah. get it, man. It sounds like you're not just a good musician, a good entertainer, but you have a good head on your shoulders. And I think uh, I, so. I think your <laughs> muse, Amanda, is going to focus you in the right direction. Because I, I already heard in the course of this podcast, I think you talk too much. No, you don't talk too much. <laughs> you got things to say. You got things yeah. to say, and you could say them right here, man. I appreciate I you. Here's the thing I always come up with. I'm going to leave you with this if that's all right. And we're going right, to. Okay, so here's the thing. People ask me all the time, what's the difference between those that do and those that don't? And I say it's pretty simple. Those that do have something to say, and those that don't are just saying something. And there you have it. Man, that was, you know, I, I usually finish these things off with last words for the people. I think that can be the last words for the people right there. I, I didn't even have to prompt you for that, man. But, uh, you well, know, I, I think that's a good way to, that's a good place for you to give it the zip, the boom. Excellent, man. But I do want people, uh, people to get a hold of you. Uh, give them your, your links. I know I got 308 ghosttrain.com. That's the big one. Yeah. Yeah, and you can go to, you know, you can go, if you Google 308 Ghost Train, like 10 pages come up of all kinds of stuff, which is easy. But if you go to Spotify, it's 308 Ghost Train, 
Apple, 308 Ghost Train, Facebook, 308 Ghost Train. We're so unique of a name, you can't miss us. You know, Instagram, 308 Ghost Train. Uh, I encourage people to go to Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple, listen to the stuff. You know, uh, if you got a playlist, add it, save it for us. I mean, we want we want to get to know everybody. If anybody wants to send us any kind of a an email, they can go to 308ghosttrain.com. And I think on the last page is a contact page. You can uh, write to us. Um, and, if, of course, if you need anything, just write me. I'll send you – please send me your email address so I can send you the, uh, the MP3s you need. And uh, like I said, we're hoping to see everybody, you know, in 2021, 2022, when we go around the world. And uh, we want to shake hands and please come up and say you've heard us, you know, on this place or this show or any other show. And we'd love to meet you. And there you go. Yeah, I was looking at the 308 Ghost Train. You got a, a club there, that uh, like a, a mailing club. Well, Friday nights under the lights, uh, 308. I have a, yeah, I have, my, yeah I, have, I have my own little venue. It's uh, um, in Palmetto. It's a. Uh, it's actually called the Band Cave. It's our Band Cave. We we rehearse there, but I open it up for my friends. Like if somebody wants to come play, you know, they can come play an acoustic show or they come play a show for people. I have it like, uh, you know, we use it to shoot videos. So we use it all the time. But you know, Friday nights, Thursday nights, we have friends come over. They, you know, they play poker. Saturday nights, they come play poker. Friday nights, they're open for musicians. Uh, you know, whenever somebody wants to go, if they want to rehearse, they call me. I let them use it as a rehearsal. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a it's it's my way of, it's my way of giving back. You know what I mean? Hey, I like it a lot, man. And you know, people throw a little donation your way. That sounds fine too, man. But it sounds like a great place to party as we well, as we break out of this COVID nineteen quarantine thing. Well, let me say one more thing about the club. You know, the club is attached to a foundation that I started called One Heart at a Time Foundation. And basically, we bridge the gap between other charities and maybe some of the incidental costs, uh, you know, that that occur that, you know, the organizations can't fully take up, but the parents or the kids can't afford to do. So, you know, we bridge the gap, so to speak. So it's one heart at a time foundation and all the money that's made in the venue for any reason donated goes to the foundation. So and it goes to help people. We fed about I don't know, we fed about 10 families this year. For Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we gave a few families full Christmas gifts. You know, they were, you know, they were um, hurting, you know, uh, financially, and we had happened to be doing okay. And, um, you know, so we, we gave back, you know, and so we do that. So we have a foundation too. Yeah, we're doing all kinds of stuff, man. Man, so <laughs> many facets of you, Anthony Train Caruso. Add philanthropy now, to, to the list. Boom, philanthropist. I'm I'm trying to leave a legacy, brother. I I got a lot of I got a lot of miles to walk. I gotta fill my basket up quick. Who knows how long we got left? I gotta fill it up quick, dude. Well, yeah, you you say you start you started it all off with uh, John three oh eight, you know. So uh, you know at least uh, whether you're a Bible thumping man, at least you've read that book and, and you know well, that there's a book of instructions there. Honestly, I'm not really I'm not religious. I'm just yeah. spiritual. I'm not a religious guy. I'm very spiritual though, and and. I, I mean, I don't know that book. I mean, I don't know it by heart. I mean, but I, I perused through it in my life, and you know what? There's some good stuff to take away from it, and there's some stuff that, you know, is questionable, but there's some good stuff. And John 308 came across to me, and kind of the book opened up, and the page was there, and I read it. And that was back when the thing happened, and I said, that's what we're going to call the band. You know I mean, 308. It's going to have something to do with this 308, and then it just all came together. So there you have it. Hey, you know, I'm, 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 driven, I'm driven by the divine, my friend. <laughs> Well, keep on keeping on, man. Hey, I don't want this to be the last time that we chit chat. I want to keep uh, talking to you from time to time as things progress, as the uh, 308 ghost train keeps a rolling and, and the train himself keeps a rolling as well. So, you know what? I will do last words for the people. Now that, uh, that you ha you did give some last words, some good words of advice, but, uh, you know, usually I like to finish these things off last words for the people. It could be um, words to live by, something you heard a long time ago or just whatever words pop into your head at this moment in time. And Anthony Train Caruso, give the last words for the people. Only thing you, the only one you got to prove shit to in your life is you, no one else. Well, there you have it, party people. Anthony Train Caruso. That man is so full of energy. I could only imagine going to a 308 Ghost Train show and having that man in the front just, ah, uh, 
bringing that energy. Oh, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad he's got a nice lady to uh, to give him a muse. That's what we're here for is to, uh, you know, be together and and find that love, pursuit of happiness. Isn't that what it's all about? It sounds like he's a very happy, happy dude, and I'm glad he has that happiness. And he translates that, hap- that happiness into songs, into music for us to enjoy. Yes, you and me, we get to enjoy all that great, great music that comes from 308 Ghost Train. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that, that television show as well. Uh, and, and he even taught us a little bit about NFTs. Man, he, is, he has a lot of energy. And he needs to get that direction. And it sounds like he's got a head on a good head on his shoulders, man. So I'm, I'm glad he's got that a, a nice lady that's in his corner as well. All right, party people. That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. Thank you so much, Anthony Train Caruso, for being on the show. Now, if you, yes, you, I'm turning my attention to you, would like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, radiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.